In today's video, we're going to talk about the Excel certification test. Specifically, we're going to talk about formulas. When I think about the Excel test, I get excited. People think I'm crazy, and they're probably right, but I think that this test really gauges your skill level. However, when I talk to my students and adults that I'm helping prepare for this test, I get a different reaction from my own. I get a scared look, and I almost immediately have to fight their I can't do this attitude in order to help prepare them for the test. One reason people get scared for this test is the formulas. This fear was increased when the 2016 test was released because the 2013 test told you the formulas that you would need to use in order to complete the task, but they don't do this in the 2016 version. They expect you to try and figure it out and have a, a thorough understanding of the formulas that you're using. So I decided I was gonna record a video that will cover every type of formula you will see on the certification test. Now, the examples that I'm going to show you are going to be clean and simple. On the test, you're going to have to think about the question. You're going to have to examine the sheet in some cases to make sure that you're, what you're doing is correct. My advice to my students is this. Yes, the formulas can be difficult, but you don't have to get them all right, just most of them. If you're not immediately sure what to do on the task, mark it for review and move on. And then if there's time at the end, go back and try and figure out what you didn't understand. Before I begin demonstrating any of the functions that you're going to be expected to do, I want to go ahead and take a moment to stop by the Microsoft webpage, specifically the one that's geared towards the Excel 2016 certification. If we scroll down here, we can see that there's going to be five different categories you're going to be gauged as to whether you know it or not. And then under the perform operations with form formulas and functions, it actually tells you every single formula that you're going to be expected to know. So these are the formulas that we're going to talk about in the video and it will allow you to help study as you prepare for this test. Before I begin talking about the functions you're going to see on the certification test, they're going to expect you to be able to do manual calculations that don't involve the functions. So let's go ahead and talk about a few of those. The first is the add. Now, I'm going to go ahead and manually type in this formula. So what I need to do is I need to hit the equal sign here. That equal sign tells Excel that it's about to perform a calculation. If you do not have this equal sign, it will not know that it needs to calculate anything. So for this, what I'm going to do is there are a few ways to put in a cell. This one will go ahead and type in C2. And as I key that in on my keyboard, notice that the C2 cell highlights. We'll go ahead and do the addition symbol there. And then for the next one, I'm going to go ahead and just select C3, and we'll go ahead and click Enter. And notice it went ahead and it added those two cells for me. If I need to look at what's going on in the background, if I look here in the formula bar here at the top, it'll tell me that it's adding C2 plus C3. Subtraction's the same. We'll go ahead and do equal sign. We'll select C2. We'll type in the minus sign, and we'll go ahead and select C3. We'll click Enter. For multiplication, we'll do equals. C2, we'll do shift 8, and then that shift 8 creates that little star, that's the multiplication symbol, and then we'll go ahead and select C3, and click enter, and notice it went ahead and multiplied those together. Now, something else you're going to want to know how to do is multiply a cell by a percentage. So if we wanted to find out what is 40% of C2, we can do equals, type that, by 0.4. Click OK. Notice it went ahead and it did that for us. And then division equals, we'll do C2, and we'll use the slash here for division, and we'll select our second cell, we'll click OK. Now, that's how you can key in a formula. I want to encourage you, do not hand key in any actual formula on the test that's not manual. I want to encourage you to use the insert function, which is this right here. So we'll go ahead and, for this, we'll do insert function, you can actually use the sum function for this. We'll click OK. And then I can select my range. Now the great thing about the insert function is here it tells me for number one, it gives me a hint of what's going on here in this category. And as the functions get more complicated, this is going to be very helpful. It also is helpful if we do insert function. So for example, concatenate. What is concatenate? Well, if you look here, it tells us join several text strings into one text string. And so it gives you a brief description of the function. As you're going through the certification test, if you think it might be concatenate, you can look up concatenate, and then based upon the description of that, you can determine if that's really the function that you need. 
Let's go and look at the first group of functions that we're going to be expected to do that can be found on the Microsoft page. The first one is sum. Now, again, we don't want to manually hand key in any formulas. We want to go ahead and use the insert function, and we'll go ahead and type in sum. We'll hit enter. And what it did was it pulled up the sum function. We'll click OK. Now it's asking me what range of cells I want to add. So I can type in this right here, or I can click and drag my mouse. And notice it went ahead and populated it. So you have either option. You can manually type in this range, or you can just go ahead and, and use your mouse to select it, and we'll click OK. Notice it went ahead and it added. Sum is add. The next one we want to do is the min function. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our cursor in G5. We'll go ahead and insert function. We'll type in min, and we'll click OK. Now, the min function, what it does is it pulls the smallest number found in a range. And so we'll go ahead and select this right here. C2 to C25, we'll click OK. The smallest number that is found is 0.75. Max is the opposite. We'll go ahead and type in max. Max returns the largest value in a set of values. So we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll select our range. And we'll click OK. Notice it went ahead and it tells us that the, the largest number is 4.99. Let's look at the count formula. So we'll put our cursor in G7, we'll click insert function, we'll click count, go, and our count counts the number of cells in a range that contains numbers, we'll click OK, select our range, click OK, and it says that there's 24 numbers there. And then finally our average, so we'll put our cursor there, and the average just tells us what the average prices between all the cells. So we'll go ahead and type in average. We'll click OK. And we'll select our range here again. We'll click OK. And the average price is 2.89. On the certification test, when you see these types of functions, you're going to see things like add this range of cells or it's what's the largest number, what's the smallest number, how many is in the worksheet. What's the average price of items found in store A? Let's go and look at the next group of functions listed on the website, and they're all ifs. Now the if confuses people. If simply means a condition. So if it says some if, it wants you to add numbers if it meets certain criteria. Looking at this first one, which we're going to save if for the end, the if function has Excel looking at a situation, and if it's true, it's going to put text or perform a calculation, and if it's false, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to put a group of text or perform a calculation based upon if the criteria that you put in there meets those requirements. So before we actually look at if, because there's a lot of things you can do with it, let's look at some if. So we put our cursor here in G5. We're going to click the insert function button. We'll go ahead and type in some if. We'll select some if. Be careful not to su uh, click some ifs, just some if. And it's going to ask for our range. Now, this range is not our numbers in this case. This range is going to be for this food. Now, it could be numbers, but for this, I'm just going to do food. And so what it, I've told Excel is I want you to look here in this range, and I want you to look for this, bread. So it's going to look through this entire list, look for bread. And then if you see the word bread, I want you to add that number with all the other times you found bread. So the sum range is our actual numbers. Again, our range is, our, is what we want Excel to look at. Our criteria is the word bread. And notice after I hit the tab key going through these, it put quotation marks around it. In a previous part of the video, I said, do not hand key in any formulas. And this would be a reason why. If you didn't have those quotation marks, it would have marked it and came back with an error message. And then again, our sum range is the numbers. And so if we click OK, notice it went ahead and it added all of the bread amounts. So here it added that, added this one, and it added this one together. Let's look at average if. We'll go ahead and click insert function. We'll type in average if, and we'll click OK. So same thing, we'll look here. 
we'll click, we'll select our range. This time we'll change it up, we'll select water. And when I hit tab, notice to put the quotation marks again around that. And then this time we'll look at the price again, average if, and we'll click okay. And then it returned the value of 3.91 as the average price of water. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do insert function again. And this time we're gonna look at count if. We'll click okay and we'll select count if. And we'll select a food range again. We'll type in this time ice tea and we'll click okay. And it tells me that in this list, ice tea is found three different times. Now, let's go ahead and look at if. If's a fun one. It can be kind of tricky, but we'll go ahead and click insert function. We'll type in if, and we'll click okay. For this, our large local test is gonna be simple. We're just gonna put for B does this, and we'll go ahead and type in equal store A. And I'm typing in exact. Notice that when I tab through, it's not sure what's going on because I did not add my quotation marks. And so it did not put it in this time because I had started off this part of the logic statement with something else, but it did tell me over here, hey, something's wrong here. And so again, a benefit of using the function builder is it guides you through each step. If it's true, we wanna put yes. If it's false, we'll put no. And what we'll do is we'll click okay. And that did say yes. Now we're not limited to just that. We could have done a number. So let's go ahead and look at insert function. We'll do if again. And this time, we'll, our logical test will be this. Is this greater than or equal to $2? It tells me it's false here in this section. What we wanna do is put yes, and we'll do no. And we'll click okay. Notice it went ahead and returned the value here, no. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do a drag fill here. It's not gonna be obvious because this is kind of a little bit sloppy, but if I drag down, notice that here it says C4, is it uh, equal than or greater to two? Here it was no. Now, it, now it's looking at C5, is it greater than two? And it actually comes back as yes. More than likely, if you have a question using if, you're gonna have to fill the formula through your worksheet and so be prepared to do this. Again, this is kind of sloppy. What you'll want to do is just analyze your worksheet to know what you need to put in there. One other thing I want to look at for this function is that here we just put plain text, but something that you could have done is, and we'll look at C8. So we'll put C8 multiplied by 10. For here, we can do same thing, C8 maybe divided by two and we'll click OK. And notice instead of putting text, this time it actually carried out a calculation. And the same thing, I can drag this down and it will continue to do calculations based upon what it found in those cells. And you can do some of the similar things that we just did with the, the criteria, looking to see if something's greater than or less than. It's not just limited to text. And so the if can be tricky, but if you practice, this won't trip you up on the test. On the certification test, when you're looking at these types of formulas, the main thing you're gonna be looking for in the question is a criteria. So for this, it could be, what's the total cost of hamburgers? It'll always have a criteria that you're looking for. It only wants you to do this function if something else is there. Let's go ahead and look at the last sections of formulas listed on the Microsoft webpage. So the first function's right. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and put our cursor here in G4. We'll click insert function. We'll type in right here. And when it filters, we'll make sure right selected. We'll click okay. Now, what the formula right does is it looks at a cell and displays the text in that cell starting from the right and moving towards the left based upon how many numbers we select. So for this, we'll go ahead and select A5, which is the word water. And then in number of characters, we'll go ahead and select two, which should be ER. And it shows us that that's what's gonna display. We'll click okay. Notice it went ahead and displayed in A5, the ER. We can change that if we wanted to see three. We can click, click, click okay. And notice it went TER. The left function does the exact same thing, 
except for it starts at the left and moves towards the right. So we can go ahead and click insert function. We'll type in left, we'll click okay. We'll do the same word A5. We'll display two characters and we'll click okay. And notice it went ahead and it displayed the first two letters of that word. And notice it went ahead and it's exact. So this W is capitalized. Let's look at the next function called mid and it's probably the most difficult of the three functions. We'll click insert function. We'll type in mid, we'll click OK. Now, this time we're gonna go ahead and select one of the prices here, because I think it'll be a little bit easier. And we'll look at the, the price of bread. So we'll select our cell C4, and it asks us where we wanna start looking to display. And for this, what we're gonna to wanna to do is display the cents and the price. And so our starting character is going to be three. Now let me count you through this. The number one is our first character. The period is our second character. So the third number is the nine. So we'll go ahead and type in start number, the three. And it's gonna ask me, how many characters do I wanna display starting there? And for this, we'll go ahead and we'll select two because we only wanna display the sense. So we'll click okay. And notice it went ahead and it put in nine nine. Let's look at upper. So we'll go ahead and click insert function. We'll type in up here, upper. We'll click OK. And for this, we'll go ahead and select A4, and we'll click OK. And notice it went ahead and it took the text in A4 and made it all capitalized. Let's go ahead and look at the lower, which does the exact opposite. It'll lowercase everything. We'll click OK. And for this, we'll go ahead and, and click Ice T, which is A7. And notice it went ahead and, and displayed that entire cell in lowercase. Now, let's look at proper. Proper, what it does is it capitalizes the first letter in every word. So we'll click insert function here. We'll type in proper, click OK. And this time we'll select hot dogs. So I wanna see, show you that it, it does both. It does the H and the D in hot dogs. And so let's look at concatenate. Concatenate's the most difficult function here. It throws a lot of people off. We'll go ahead and click insert function. We'll type in concatenate. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now what concatenate does is it combines different cells. We can type in text and makes it and puts all of that into one cell. So for example, I can type in the price of, and I'm gonna go ahead and type the space here. Because for text line two, notice it went ahead and put that space, it was very important. I can select hamburgers or hamburger for this. I just type selected A2. And then what I'm gonna do is space is space. I'm gonna tab again to text four. I'm gonna select C2. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move down to the text five and I'm gonna put period. And we'll click okay. And notice what it did. It combined a bunch of cells, some text that I put in and made it all one line. And if I click here, I can look at the function. It displays it out. This is a function that does trip up a lot of people. And so what you wanna do is practice this over and over until you feel comfortable doing this function. On the certification test, these text functions might not be as easy to identify, but you'll be looking for things like display the price of this cell, this many spaces, or display this text or have this text capitalized or lowercase, and then concatenate will be combine these different cells into one line. We went quickly through those formulas. I wanna encourage you to take the time to study the formulas that we reviewed in this video. The more time you spend practicing these formulas, the easier they're going to be when you need to carry them out and perform them on the certification test. I heard a mentor of mine say quite a few times, it's not practice that makes perfect, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. I want to encourage you to take the time to carefully do each... It would probably be even better to write it on an index card. On one side, write the function and on the back side write what it actually does and quiz yourself flipping back and forth through the cards.
As you prepare for this test, I wish you all the best.